excited to have consulted with the Connecticut Green Bank and Inclusive Prosperity Capital on this case. And um, we had a clear problem to solve for Connecticut Green Bank. It was to create financial stability while continuing to engage diverse stakeholders. For IPC, it was to develop a strong brand while um, continuing to scale programs. And in thinking about solutions, we considered that CGB, IPC, and the state of Connecticut share a vision for a robust state economy that leads the nation in thoughtful clean energy adoption. And to that end, they have already had a great amount of success. CGB, as the nation's first green bank, has implemented many successful programs and acted as a thought leader in the clean energy space since its founding. These programs have already reduced emissions by over 4 million tons and implemented more than 286 megawatts of clean energy capacity in the state, all of this while creating jobs and strengthening the economy. IPC's greatest assets are its relationship to CGB and its clear vision for changing the conversation around clean energy in underserved communities. It also benefits from the ability to operate outside of Connecticut. For both of these programs, there are many opportunities and our proposals are intended to benefit both in reciprocal ways. CGB needs to continue to offer profitable, innovative programs to create the long-term financial stability they need to have a large-scale environmental impact. We propose utility-scale investment in clean energy microgrids. This is compelling because Connecticut has already demonstrated a commitment to this type of investment through their grant funding program, and this map shows operating, planned, and prioritized microgrid sites throughout the state. We propose using an iteration of an existing financing model to engage utility companies, private investors, and contractors like Fuel Cell Energy that have already demonstrated interest in investments of this kind. And we, while we recommend that municipalities and communities consider fuel cells as their clean energy source for these microgrids, we also encourage municipalities to consider whatever clean energy source works best for their local community. Our intention is for this program to facilitate the um, implementation of a utility scale network of microgrids that allows Connecticut to work towards energy independence, creating a resilient infrastructure, while at the same time creating jobs and spurring economic development. Alongside the clean energy microgrid model, we propose the Connecticut Green Bank raise capital through bonding to pay for long needed infrastructure, transportation infrastructure improvements in the state. As a quasi governmental agency, Connecticut Green Bank has a bonding authority through which it can raise low cost capital and then lend to state agencies such as the Connecticut Department of Transportation to invest in these infrastructure improvements. What we envision is rail lines like the Metro North. Metro New, uh, New Haven line, which is the most utilized in the country with 40 million annual riders, being powered by clean hydrogen fuel cell power microgrids and also seeing energy infrastructure improvements, which will be paid for through the bonding mechanism. Uh, through this focus on transportation, which does contribute over 40% of greenhouse gas emissions, we can help Connecticut make substantial progress towards their 2020 and 2050 climate mitigation goals. To summarize the impact that we, we foresee for Connecticut Green Bank, the clean energy microgrid and infrastructure improvement model will be based on a foundation of secure and sustainable funding provided by the mixed ownership model and bond financing mechanism. Uh, this is as opposed to the rate payer fees that Connecticut Green Bank has used in the past, which would be not as secure. <coughs> Again, through the strategic fo focus on transportation, they'll be making substantial impact on greenhouse gas and climate mitigation. Also, in these Connecticut uh, Metro Rail North stations, we'll have educational placards that highlight the uh, technologies being used and Connecticut Green Bank's role in financing them. This will really help to enhance Connecticut Green Bank's program visibility and brand awareness. As we expand these programs throughout the state, they'll be generating a lot of actionable data that can be used in conjunction with our partner organization, Inclusive Prosperity Capital, to drive a more national conversation about green energy adoption. Turning now to Inclusive Prosperity Capital, this is a newly formed nonprofit entity, and with that nonprofit status comes some exciting opportunities. The most important priority for them is to develop a sense of distinctive mission, which is differentiated from Connecticut Green Bank. Alongside that distinctive mission, we foresee strategic branding to make the most of their nonprofit status, allowing them to receive different types of funding and also to operate beyond the borders of Connecticut. Most importantly, 
uh, we, we, we've, we've built for them some sources of sustaining revenue that will ensure that they are a viable uh, going concern over time. For IPC, we built on their vision uh, this unique mission statement, which we've drafted. It emphasizes access to clean energy for all, uh, leveraging data insights, and also becoming a, a clean energy ambassador for the region and hopefully the nation. Aligned with the mission are three key goals. The first is to, invest, to deploy targeted investment funds in underinvested communities and underinvested institution types. The second is to pilot proof of, proof of concept programs, demonstrating the real feasibility of these types of projects. And the third is to enable green energy adoption beyond Connecticut's borders through the use of data and also through something we call the Green Fellows Initiative. Now to develop I IPC's identity as independent, we recommend focusing on three core elements. Commitment to underserved communities, a broader regional emphasis, and data-driven insights. Now IPC should still leverage its relationship with CGB to uh, establish credibility or draw upon past collaborations. And for this, we have sample language such as inclusive prosperity capital incubated by Connecticut Green Bank. To help IPC uh, achieve scale and deliver nationwide impact, we have two approaches. The first approach is the Green Fellows Initiative. This is a one-year paid fellowship for post-college graduates. The first six months, they'll be uh, helping staff and develop IPC projects and act as a marketing arm through community, creating community education events and tabling at uh, contractor conventions about financing opportunities. Then they'll have six months at a environmental uh, nonprofit that has applied to host a Green Fellow. While there, they'll be acting as ambassadors, facilitators, and, and uh, advocates for helping develop green energy economic solutions for underinvested communities. And this will build a strategic partnership nationwide. Our next approach is the director of creating a director of data integration. This is to capitalize on the valuation of data captured by CGB and IPC. The Director of Data Integration will focus on uh, data return opportunities, as well as create a data strategy that invites private investment into low income, uh, low to moderate income communities because of the profitability of the investment, and also the data research opportunities. Also, the, the, they will launch IPC's data consulting services. For example, IPC can consult with CGB on their microgrid program to help select hardware options based off of data capture abilities. By collecting and integrating data about clean, green, clean energy adoption and transit uh, patterns through sources such as microgrids, the rail stations, and charging stations, IPC will be able to develop a rich data repository that will have value to multiple stakeholders. Our suggestions focus on helping CGB and IPC achieve the financial stability and scalable impact they need to achieve their missions. So for the Connecticut Green Bank, our proposals help improve their performance on existing KPIs. So we'll reduce greenhouse gas emissions through increasing the number of users of public transportation uh, and the installation of microgrids, as well as create jobs throughout Connecticut. We also, in our proposal, try to leverage CGB's history of bringing diverse stakeholders to the table, but doing this in a highly visible way that brings spot, really spotlights this fantastic organization. For IPC, we focus on helping them develop a distinct identity that leverages their past relationship with CGB, and also increase the scale and impact of their programs with minimal financial investment since they are a new nonprofit. And coming up with these proposals, we try to boldly envision a better tomorrow in the same way CGB and IPC do this to achieve their mission and vision. We imagined a tomorrow where hundreds and thousands of new commuters forego taking their own private vehicles and join their uh, fellow commuters public, in public transit. They take those trains from stations powered by hydrogen fuel cells, and while they're waiting for the train, they learn about CGB and their impact on the this, this design through educational placards. We imagine a tomorrow where Connecticut is speckled with dozens of new clean energy microgrids, which help reduce greenhouse gas emissions and bring jobs throughout the state of Connecticut, especially in rural communities. 
We imagined a tomorrow where dozens of IPC Green Fellows come together from their nationwide pla placements for an annual symposium to educate, innovate, and inspire the next generation of Green leaders. And most importantly, we imagined a tomorrow where Connecticut leads the nation and the world in proving that the acceleration of clean energy adoption is financially feasible and fiscally responsible. Thank you so much for your time today. It was a joy to work on this case. <laughs> and with that, we'd love to invite your questions. Judge, questions for? Yeah, I'll start it off. Um, I, I, I love the uh, out-of-box thinking, um, uh, the integration of the you know, microgrids with fuel, uh, electric vehicle, vehicle charging, things like that. But as good as they are, microgrids and everything else, that they're resilient. And the whole key there is, you know, what's the business model? Because yes, you hit it right. You know, the Green Bank raised the low cost financing to the bond market to do that. Same time as to demonstrate you can pay those bond bondholders back. So um, what I was trying to find in your presentation wasn't really coming through was how is how is that value stream uh, recognized and passed passed on? Who's really standing in front of that burden? You know, who's the sponsor really of that? Yeah. In the first instance. Do you want to talk about microgrids first? Sure. So we came up with um, this model to engage multiple stakeholders. And we hoped that distributing the capital requirements among contractors, utilities, and uh, private equity firms would be enough to um, encourage investment in an in a industry that's still developing. And that also the data that would be produced from installing those test cases would then be valuable to stakeholders outside of Connecticut or looking to do it elsewhere, other utility companies. Um, we have a tentative um, model for you know, the growth of implementation of these microgrids. I believe uh, Fuel Cell Energy CEO said that in order to be profitable, they need to install 80 megawatts of capacity um, we would get there in five years with this model, so it would take a little bit of time for the return to be realized. Um, but the utility companies, you know, right now are at the, the whim of the changing legislation, so kind of the stability of getting ahead of that versus looking for new laws to come out that they then have to react to, um, we hoped would be compelling enough to bring those stakeholders to the table. Um, first of all, it's a great presentation, so congrats on that. Um, so when I hear microgrids, I hear energy consumption away from the utility, hurting the utility. So I'm wondering, when you did this, did you, how are you thinking about the local utilities and how they are part of this or not? Yeah. So some utilities, we, we hoped that the utilities would invest in partnerships. So it would be a public-private partnership with municipalities, private investors and utilities would have some ownership over it so that um, the power purchase agreements would have revenue going back to them. And in this way, they wouldn't have to be buying you know, credits or worrying about, they would have their own internal source for this clean energy that would count towards their, you know, the, what, what's set by the legislature. And I think a really important point, too, that facilitates utility buy-in is that this improves their existing energy infrastructure. So Connecticut being on the coast, if there's a hurricane that's knocking out some of their main power sources, to have inland microgrids actually delivers better electricity services to their customers and could serve as a competitive advantage when they're trying to compete with maybe national firms um, in Connecticut. Yes, sir. So I, I want to focus on the IPC Green part for, uh, for a second. Um, uh, just from the case study, uh, I, uh, part of the purpose of IPC and spinning it out as a nonprofit is to enable it to raise money from foundations and other institutional capital for nonprofits. Did you guys have time to think through how your branding and your recommendations would appeal to the foundation community? And if so, what did that investigation produce? Start on that one and then maybe you can follow. Uh, 
you know, it, it's, I've worked in nonprofits in the past too, and I'm familiar with the, the foundation funding mechanisms that they often do rely on in the early years of operation before they've discovered more self sustaining ways to fund themselves. So that really encouraged us to focus on data because we believe that a lot of uh, foundation funders are going to look for some true uh, KPIs that, and data based measures that prove the efficacy of this program. So that we, we think that before actually going to the step of monetizing the data, it's an important way to initially attract funding from foundations by being very data driven. Yeah, I was just going to be data, 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 data. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was my, that's been my push. I see data as such an underlying fabric of where uh, creativity and resources that you can't even imagine right now. So having that built in place and people recognizing that you're, you're taking that very seriously data is a way to uh, go places you can't even imagine now, and having that in place is a way to attract. And you, have you seen evidence that foundation, foundations are funding those kinds of efforts? Uh, personally, I, I, this, this summer I interned with uh, Cure Alzheimer's Fund, uh, which devotes 100% of their research to Alzheimer's research, and uh, they're, they're an organization that, that truly does look for data-backed data measures that show the efficacy of the, the researchers' work before they will invest in a project. So that's my personal experience with it. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Time for one more question. All right. Thank you, team. Okay. Thank you.